Hello, my name is Jennifer George and I'm an employment lawyer at Isaac Brandt Lebman and Teeter in Columbus, Ohio. One of the areas of employment law that I think is of interest and is extremely important for employers is the Fair Labor Standards Act, which is also called the FLSA. And so as to be of best service to employers, I thought we could break up the FLSA into three helpful informational sessions. First, we'll talk about what is the FLSA and why should you care as an employer. Second, we'll talk about common areas of interests and stumbling blocks for employers under the FLSA. And finally, we'll discuss what are some common tips to avoid problems and liabilities under the FLSA. So first, what is the FLSA? If it had to be broken down into one general rule, it would be. If an employee works over the 440 or hours in a regular work week, he or she must be paid time and a half for each hour above that standard 40. However, it gets much more complicated than that general rule. For an employee to be pay paid overtime, that employee would be called non-exempt. Some employees, however, are not required to be paid overtime, and they're called exempt because they are exempt from the overtime rules. And those employees, those who are exempt, fall into three classifications. First, bona fide executive, second, administrative, and third, professional. Now, how do you determine if your employee is one of these three types? You can't go by job title. It needs to be determined by a job audit, and a job audit is performed by a legal professional, and it looks at the employee's day-to-day -day tasks to see if, in fact, they are one of the three types of employees. But a short definition of each would be as follows. Bonafide executive is someone who is in a constant management capacity and manages two full-time employees or the equivalent thereof. Administrative is someone who uses regular means of discretion or judgment calls and is in a non-manual type of job title or job capacity. For instance, a lot of times um, an insurance adjuster would be uh, someone who would use a type of code or uh, such as a building inspector and would make decisions based on very stringent standards that are either black or white uh, would not be someone who could be said to be use a lot of discretion. And finally, professional would be someone who would have an advanced degree or someone who uses a high level of creativity or innovation in their field. Uh, usually a, an example of that would be a nurse or an accountant. And let's talk about why you should care as an employer. As an employer, it is the lawful means of, an, of compensating an employee and a means that will keep employee morale up for that matter. But also, it can lead to a large amount of liability on the part of the employer. An employee-related lawsuit or liability under the FLSA can be initiated two ways. It can be initiated by an inspection, uh, that's by the Wage and Hour Division of the Department of Labor, or an employee can initiate a lawsuit on their own behalf. And the damages can be excessive because the employee would be looking at recouping the past minimum wage, the past overtime, which would be that time and a half that we discussed, add those two numbers together and then multiply them by two, which is called liquidated damages under the law and it's allowed for under the Fair Labor Standards Act. And then in addition to that, the unique aspect is that an employee can get reimbursed all of their attorney's fees and all of their costs. Putting those two things together, it can be a large liability to an employer. And if you want to know how far back such a lawsuit can go, it can go back two years, or in some cases, if it's looked that an employer deliberately violated the FLSA, it can go back three years, which means that, num that number of liability can get extremely large for an employer. Now in the next session, we'll talk about common areas of interest under the FLSA.